Sola Scriptura matters 500 years later just as much as it did during the days of the Reformation in the 16th century because the same issue is at stake, the matter of authority. By what authority do we know truth? By what authority do we understand God? By what authority do we defend the gospel? Only God's word is the perfect revelation and carries the authority of God himself in it. And in the day that we live in, that's just as much an important matter as it was in the days of the reformers. Connected to that, it's not just a matter of authority, but the matter of sufficiency. Sola Scriptura affirmed that the word of God is enough for us to reach the lost, change the culture, nurture the saints. We need that desperately in our day, not just confidence, in the exclusive authority of the sacred scriptures, but confidence in its total sufficiency to reach this generation with the good news of Jesus Christ. Looking back over his life, uh, Martin Luther once said, I opposed indulgences and all papists, but never by force. I simply taught, preached, wrote God's word. Otherwise, I did nothing. And while I slept, the word so greatly weakened the papacy that never a prince or emperor did such damage to it. I did nothing. The word mm. did it all. Now, when, when I hear that quote from Martin Luther, I, I the, the first thing that I recognize in that is someone who is so gripped by the power and majesty of God's word, right? You, you, you can sense the, 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 he feels like the, the word is explosive. You know, it's dynamite in, in, in the hands of, of God's people. Um, but there's also something there that leads into this first very important sola scriptura is because you, you have him, him taking the word of God and he is, he's standing over against right. the papacy, the, the, the church tradition at the, that time. And so it's not simply that statement, a, a statement about the power of God's word mm -hmm. in general, it's of the authority of God's word over all other things. So that leads us to this first sola, sola scriptura. Kevin, how would you define this sola of the Reformation? It's really foundational. I, I think in simplest terms, it means that the Bible has the final say on everything that the Bible means to say something about. Mm. That there is no final authority. When you, when you get to the end of the, well, why do you believe what you believe? Or what do we believe about what we believe questions? That there's nothing after this is what scripture says. That there's no authority beyond that to say, well, how does that square with the church councils? Or how does that work with the creeds that have already been written? All of those things that have their place, and they certainly do and can be helpful, must finally be tested against God's word. It's not that it's the only authority that we ever look to, but it is that final authority. It has the last word so that we believe the word of God is sufficient to do the work of God, which is exactly what Luther is talking about there. So the Bible says that is the, the final, the ultimate authority that we would make an appeal to. Yeah, and, and, and of course, you know, it's the Bible as, you know, it needs to be rightly interpreted. People can, you know, quote the Bible wrongly. But as much as sometimes people may think, well, that's sort of a naive position to just land on, well, the Bible says it and I believe it. But uh, yeah, because it's not just a, a book that we're, you know, giving our allegiance to, but it's our conviction from this book that this is not just a book, but this is God speaking to us, living and active. So how could we not give the Bible the final word if it is God's word, God himself speaking? If we believe God gets the final word, mm -hmm. then his word has to have the final word as well. Now, Dr. Muller, a lot of people might be hearing this and saying, well, of course the Bible has the final word. Why, why, would, any, why would anyone find this controversial today or, or have found this controversial in the past? So can you help us understand yeah. historically why this was such a, uh, an explosive teaching to come from Martin Luther and from the reformers during their day? Yeah, explosive is right. I mean, you consider what this landed as, as a, a thunderclap in the mm -hmm. middle of the Reformation and, and everyone knew that sola scriptura was where it would begin and end 
and, and that's because this is what we call the formal principle of the Reformation. Right. This was the doctrine that led to all the others, all the other affirmations of the Reformation, and they all lead right back to it. And uh, one of the first things we need to do is to, is to say when, when Luther says God did it by his word, he meant by the scripture. It's sola right. scriptura. Right. And, and so we're very clear that, that there were other claims to how God would speak. That's the problem. And in particular, the Roman Catholic Church claimed that God spoke through the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church, and in particular through the papacy, in such a way that the church then became the, the vessel of God's revelation. And uh, so when the church was trying to decide what does this doctrine mean or how should we affirm this, they would consult with one another. Scripture would be a part of the conversation, but scripture did not end the conversation. So, you know, in law, during the time of Luther, the question was, what are the norms? That was a very, that was a very key question. Yeah. So, uh, the, the, so this, this, uh, this little state has this law, this little state has this law. What norms it? What, 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 what is the ultimate authority? And Luther brought that language right into the Reformation when he said the thing about Scripture is that it is the final norm. It has the final say. He had a Latin expression I love to use because you don't even have to know Latin to understand it. Those are the best ones. Yes. <laughs> he said, Scripture is norma normans non normata. And you can say, well, that sounds like a lot of Latin. What he meant was it says that the Scripture is the norm of norms that can't be normed. So you do have other sources of authority, as Kevin said. Yeah, we, we do have reason and experience and, and tradition. Even the reformers were glad right. to quote Augustine and others when uh, they believed that the, uh, the church fathers were, were right. But ultimately, it's all down to scripture. And the reason why it was so controversial is because this was a direct statement that you don't need the papacy. It was actually a little more than that, I guess. Yeah. It was a direct statement that the papacy is not a conduit of revelation. Scripture alone is. You know, uh, one of my, uh, another very powerful quote from Martin Luther is when he says, a simple layman armed with scripture is to be believed above a pope or a council without it. Yeah. And you think about the, the medieval church during that time and all of the things that were coming to the pope and the councils, that statement right there shows just uh, why this was so controversial because it was right. a, it was standing up in judgment against the, right. the church of the time. But you, you did mention though we, that there are other sources of authority and, and you alluded to this mm -hmm. as well. And I think this is important in our day because um, some, some of the ways that these solas can be misused or misread or wind up devolving over time is that you wind up with a situation in which people will over against any kind of authority or church tradition. We see this today in certain, uh, in certain quarters when it comes to certain positions of morality that are no longer right. popular in culture to say, oh, well, we just go back to the Bible, we reinterpret the Bible, we just uh, uh, look back over our interpretations where we might have gotten things wrong, where the, the church could be wrong. Uh, the scripture is our only authority instead of seeing scripture as the, the final authority. So, so how would you explain the difference? Well, the reformers Paul? dealt with that, and, yeah. and Luther in particular. Luther said very clearly that the Bible is the sole final authority. But you know, he made a very interesting statement, he said, the Bible is not a naked authority. And, and what he meant by that was, it, it comes clothed in, uh, in the fact that we are able even to use human language, as he points out, and there are all kinds of things that, that add to this. And no one reads the Bible alone, mm -hmm. uh, but we choose with whom we read the Bible. That's such an important point. Luther said, I'm gonna choose to read the Bible the way the apostles read the Bible. I'm gonna choose to read the Bible the way that uh, he believed people who affirm the gospel read the Bible. He was a part of a conversation, and that's why when you read Luther, he will cite who he's, who, who he's reading the Bible with. And, and it's the same way today. And, uh, and so we, we are not saying we're the first people to pick up the Bible right. and read it. We want to read the Bible, however, with the right people. Yeah, so I think humility is the key all the way through mm -hmm. here because it, it can sound like you're being really spiritual to say, well, it's just me and the Bible and I just got this word and I'm going back to the very beginning as if nobody's ever read this. It, I mean, the fancy term is it's the nativist fallacy to think that we can just go back to the beginning and we can reconstruct all of it just out of our own heads. So no, as Dr. Moeller said, we, we, we need to stand on the shoulders of giants as the sayings go. We need to listen to what those in the past have said. So we're not coming to this pretending that we're the only spiritual people who've ever read this book, that nobody smarter than us has ever come before us. So yes, we want to listen to church councils and to church fathers and to reformers. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're looking back to the reformers with gratitude. So it's a humility to say, 
I'm not the only person who can interpret this. I'm not the only person to come to a conclusion on this. But then it's a further humility to say, ultimately, it isn't any of those things that, that humans have come up with, but it, it's God alone. So we, we use all of that as the, the lens through which we try to understand it. But the final say is God in his word. And you're so right that it, it's the word, meaning this inscripturated word, because lots of groups would be happy to talk about God speaking in this way or that way. But it is in this objective written down word that we have the final word. Trevin, can I add something to that? The very first Luther quote that you cited comes from a context that's really important. Luther didn't just say that because he was thinking about how to affirm scripture. He was preaching that to his students, and as a seminary president, this is really close to home. Mm -hmm. And so Luther had these students, and they were fired up with zeal for the Reformation. And they were trying to bring about the Reformation by force. Uh, they were using sledgehammers to tear down mm -hmm. uh, altars and to end the mass. And, uh, and, and Luther knew he had a problem because it wasn't that they wrongly understood the mass. No, they understood the problem. The problem was that they thought they could bring about a reformation by force. And that's why Luther said to them, no, here's what you do. You preach the word, which gets to the other point about scripture alone. Luther and the reformers believed that scripture alone can reach the human heart and, uh, and bring about a true reformation and, and, and be the means whereby the gospel yeah. gets into the human heart. And so scripture alone is not only a defensive statement. Scripture alone, final That's norm, right. nothing else. Mm -hmm. It is an absolute statement of confidence in scripture. Scripture alone is how God chooses to do this work. You know, that brings Luther's challenge to us directly today because in evangelical churches and in the many churches that would, would say they come from the reformational mm -hmm. tradition, uh, we can sometimes have this tendency to think that scripture needs more in order to have power, right? That we right. somehow it needs to be propped mm -hmm. up for the day that we that we live in. And so how does Luther's that the the quote that I mentioned earlier that you were talking about that talking about the explosiveness of the the word of God and the power of the word alone getting to the heart of people. How does that truth um, impact the way we do pastoral ministry today and the way we, we in our churches will come to God's Word? Uh, I mean, as a pastor, week in and week out, I keep going back to sola scriptura because otherwise I, I, I would be adrift in ministry. I mean, there are so many other things clamoring for our attention, for our time. There are so many temptations. I mean, every pastor or church leader has got to be honest that we're tempted to think, does this really work? And I've often said to, to our congregation, if we know how to make this church a success other than by the word of God and prayer, then we're not aiming for the right things. Mm. If, if what your church can become, you can get there apart from the word and prayer, then it's not really church that Christ is building, but it's something else. So even among you know, many good Christians and Bible-believing churches who would say, yes, I love the Bible, it's all true, there is this implicit denial often of the sufficiency of Scripture, just what you said, Trevin. It, it's not enough. It's not enough when it comes to the real hard problems in counseling somebody who mm -hmm. has an eating disorder or a gender identity disorder, and we think, well, we, we better send those people somewhere else. We don't really have those you know, solutions in the Bible. Or how do we win the lost? How does a church grow? How do we disciple people? That's why I just keep coming back to our conviction, it must be a conviction, that the Word of God is sufficient to do the work of God. I mean, that, that Luther quote at the beginning is so powerful, as you guys know, because it's not from Luther ultimately, but he's just giving the parable that Jesus tells in Mark chapter 4, the That's farmer right. That's right. Who, who, who did the same thing. He sowed it and he slept, and then it says the, the, the harvest Christ. sprung up, and in the Greek it says automate, it, yeah. by itself, That's automatically. Right. So, 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 God does the work. Mm. You know, one of the interesting things is that uh, in this conversation, you've said we have to be careful to say that we don't require the scripture and anything. That's almost true. Uh, but the reformers would step in and say, oh, the scripture does require something else. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But that's the absolute confidence we have. And, and so Calvin, uh, probably more than anyone else, uh, explained how that happened. Luther, in the very quote we were just talking about, was telling his students, here's how it happens. You preach the word, that's your job. I preach the word, Luther says, and, and that was my job. I could get my voice to their ears, but I can go no further. 
Mm -hmm. But he said that's where the Holy Spirit always honors the Word of God because the Holy Spirit alone can get the Word of God, that is the Scripture, from their ears to their hearts. I can only get to their ears, but the Holy Spirit will, will apply this Word to their hearts. That's just really powerful. I think about that when I preach. And, uh, you know, when people say, how do you grow a church? How do you build a church? Well, Luther would have us to know that you build a church by preaching the Word and getting the Word to their ears. And then you got to go home, eat lunch, and take a nap. Uh, because it's the Holy Spirit alone who right. can get the word from their ears to their hearts. Yeah. Well, that's what we that's what we pray will be um, the reality in the lives of churches all across our country. People watching this video and that the the truth and the power of sola scriptura will be something that that again takes root in our in our churches and our ministries in our in our hearts, so that God can bring the increase. Amen. That's right.